Lord God Almighty. Before I pray, before I get into the Word today, I must share with you something that transpired on last week. Although those of you who stream with us live every week were not privy to it necessarily. Those of you that probably sit closer were. And that was, there were some things that I said in last week's message. Um, what every woman should know about their man that caused some offense. Um, there are a few statements that I made and one was the first victory for every man is that he stayed. Sometimes we focus on the ones who have left Husbands, fathers left, abandoned the family. But we don't celebrate the ones who stay through the ups and downs. And so I alluded to my personal first five years now. That statement was made by T.D. Jakes in a women's conference where there were thousands of women. And he was sharing with them things from a male perspective, from a man's perspective with women so they could understand. And when he said it, it just resonated in my spirit. And as a result of preparing that message, it, it came up and I said, you know, I'm going to share that because it was just a good nugget. And it appeared in that particular conference that all the women received it. Uh, maybe it's because of who he was. And uh, I'm by far not T.D. Jakes. But I said, <laughs> but I said, <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord, which I, I you know, he, there's one of him. Um, and so I said, for me, it was a victory when I got to my fifth year. And then I said, I got to my 10th year and I did the Holy Ghost dance, you know, because when you, you're married, you go through some stuff, right? But it wasn't so much about what we had gone through. But for me, because all I saw, and I said this, is men run. Come on. I, I experienced abandonment myself, abandonment myself from my father and then my stepfather. And so I said, when I get married, when I get a family, I'm not running. So it wasn't to say anything negative about my wife. Uh, and I, I said also that a, a man will... Uh, uh, <laughs> A man will run when he can't catch, catch a break. Yeah. And I said that if you see him always as a half pint, there's another woman out there that will see him as a gallon. And she'll cheer him for the gallon that she sees when you've lost sight of what he could be. So... Uh, then the question was posed to me, is that how I feel? And I said, no, that's not how I feel. That's not my story. But when I said, but it was insensitive because I said, the reality is I'm still here. And so um, I offended my, my wife. And so I publicly apologized to my wife and my daughter and you know there were others that didn't feel as though it came across like that but there was one or two who believed it did and how she could be offended so I said always if there is if there's even one who views something a certain way it's a great possibility based on your numbers that there could be 10 or 20 others it's just one 
was bold enough to speak up and say what they felt or how they saw it. And there was this, I, this thought that I was bashing women. Uh, my intent was not to bash women. I'd be a fool to come in here with a membership that's majority of women with brothers who don't tithe and bash women, have a bashing party. I'd be a fool, and I'd like to think I'm not a fool. But I'm here today to say, ladies, that if you felt like our pastor was having a bashing party, I humbly apologize and ask you to please forgive me. Because that, that, was, not my, that was not my attempt at all. And, um, you know, I, I was insensitive privately because I, I, you know, I said, hey, I didn't mean to hurt you or anyone, but I stand by my message. And I do stand by what I taught. I stand by that. But at the same time, there's a, there's a, there's a, a way you say things and there's a way to respond. And um, maybe my response could have been tapered with more love and grace and that sort of thing. See my words seasoned with, with grace and not salty. So uh, I was a little salty last week, so. Please forgive me, praise the Lord. Um, truth be told, and I'm about to pray, um, I would be also a fool to get up here and talk about my wife and say some crazy stuff like, you know, it'd just be crazy. So, um, yeah, my intent and every message is to make sure that I give you what the Lord gave me and that I also eat the same food, <laughs> spiritual food that God has given me that I'm giving you so that I'm not a hypocrite serving up something that I don't apply to myself. Amen. Amen. And so in my transparency, sometimes I guess I'm too transparent. And I did use a lot of I, I. The next time in my illustrations, I won't use me as an example. I'll use, I don't know, Doug or Chris or Billy. I'll, I'll say one, Ingerson, I, you know, Rodney. I'll say Rodney, you know, or Derek might be a better escape goat. I, I'll, just, I'll just use another brother, you know, and I won't, I won't refer to me. And, and oftentimes, I, you know, I refer, when I say me, I'm not saying that that's what I'm experiencing or that's what I, that's how, you know, that's my, necessarily my belief. But I stand here also representing, uh, you know, probably in the 22 years of ministry, probably there's, a, there's maybe three fingers, uh, three times that I've addressed women about men. Oftentimes, I'm addressing men to step up, take the responsibility, and be what God created us to be to our women because we need to protect our women and learn how to love our women and our families. Are you follow what I'm saying? But every now and then, I need to address the sisters. So you got your turn. And today, we'll, I'll close it today. Praise the Lord. So I can move on to something. Amen. That... Uh, <laughs> will be applicable to everyone. Children are dismissed. Teens, young adults are dismissed. Praise God. Father, I just thank you and praise you right now that your anointing is on my life to minister your word with accuracy. I thank and praise you that those who have ears to hear will receive a word fitly spoken in due season. I thank you that I will declare the mysteries of the gospel principles that your people need to receive so that lives and relationships and marriages and homes can be strengthened so that we all can glorify you as our desire is to receive your word, receive biblical principles and wisdom for life before leaving earth. And so, Father, I thank and praise you, hallelujah, that you'll speak through me this morning. It'll be all of you and none of me and that you will get the 
glory out of this and that every individual would be exhorted, would be edified, corrected if necessary for their own good and your glory, but most of all built up in the faith because that's what the word does. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Now, you know, when somebody asks for forgiveness, if I offended you, you need to, you know, let me know you forgive me so you ain't holding nothing against me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to talk to you today in the second part of last week's message, what every woman should know about their man is the seven things men want from their woman. The Word of God says, if you go over to Proverbs 31, 10 through 12, it says, An excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband, hear this, ladies, trust in her. And he will have no lack of gain. It's very powerful. He will have no lack of gain because he can trust in her. He can trust in her partnership. He can trust in the gift that God has given him in her. And then here's what the scripture says. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She does him what? and not harm how, how many days out of the week all the days of her life I have concluded based on the life that I've lived that both black brown yellow green alien men were from wherever ladies uh, men want what you want men want what you want What's complex for a lot of men is, how do I give you what you want? Said a mouthful. But we too want to be understood. We want to be received. We want to be valued. We want to be affirmed. We want to be appreciated. We want to be honored, respected, and loved. Not just when we come home from work, but all the time. What am I saying? We want what you want. Isn't that what we all want in a relationship? I wish I could get a better amen. amen. And so the Message Bible says it like this. A good woman is hard to find and worth far more than diamonds. Her husband trusts, hear this, trusts her without reserve and never has reason to regret it. It's powerful. Never spiteful. She treats him generously all her life long. So again, this, this text is spotlighting the attributes and qualities of a good wife, which I think is phenomenal. I believe that when every man meets the right woman, she causes change in his life. 33 years ago when I met Dr. Micheline, she caused change in my life. Every child who has the opportunity to experience a mother, that mother causes some type of change in his life. And so when we look at this text, a man likes to know that, that you can trust him as well. It's, it's not just a one-way street where, where I want to just be able to trust you. I, I want you to be, here I go again, I'm using I, me. But are, are you guys getting what I'm saying? I, I'm trying to say it like on behalf of men. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying this personally. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. I don't know. See, help me out later. Give me some pointers. I don't know. You know, English was not my major, okay? <laughs> yeah, English was not my major. But uh, we as men, uh, you know, want to know that you, you can trust 
us and lean on us and, 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 and that you appreciate us at the same time and that you hold us in high regard. Brothers ain't got to say nothing right now, but, but hear me, that, that you, 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 you support and approve of what we do and that you're on my side, our side. Amen. Amen. Just work with me here. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? A brother want to know that a chick down with him. You understand what I'm saying? You, you down with me. You understand what I'm saying? How many of you, if you've been here any length of time, I've, I've always referred to Dr. Micheline as, you know, like my body. She's my, my, my Bonnie. You know, we Clyde, Bonnie and Clyde. You understand what I'm saying? Gangster with it. And so let's get into this seven things. I, I set it up, and, and so here we go. The first thing that I believe every woman needs to understand, get a revelation of, and that is that your man has needs just like you. Your needs aren't the only needs in the relationship. Am I talking to somebody? Uh, in the book, His Needs, Her Needs, uh, author... Willard Harley suggests that when marriages fail, it is because couples don't feel like they did when they first met. And so the path to achieving this, uh, Harley states, is to meet each other's emotional needs, to meet each other's emotional needs. Uh, oftentimes in any relationship, uh, that's a challenge for people to meet each other's emotional needs. Someone else may say intellectual needs. Uh, someone else may coin it a little bit differently. But with that, um, he talks about the five, and, and, and this, is, this is him, but I'm pointing it out because I've read the book. I've suggested many couples read this book. And how many of you all are familiar with this book by a show of hands? Okay. All right, good. All three or four of you all. Good. So this is good stuff right here. And so there are five emotional needs of men that lead them to feel they are satisfied in a marriage. You got that for me? So put it up for me. The first one is men need to feel admired and held in high regard. You got that? Yeah. There you go. Go slow. Uh, and then two, I'm going to go fast so that you guys get this. Uh, men need to feel attractive. Brother can be ugly as all outdoors. But <laughs> listen to me, the right woman will make him feel like he's Denzel Washington. I'm, t I'm just saying. Amen. And then he says men need to have compa uh, companionship and do things with their spouse. In other words... Be interested in what he's interested in. Amen. Boy, it's quiet. It's okay. How many of you ladies like for your man to be interested in what you're interested in? Amen. Amen. The only way that I got into HGTV is because my wife is interested in HGTV. So now I can tell you about a whole lot of HGTV shows. Yeah. Amen. We watch them together. And then four, men need to be desired and sexually fulfilled. And then here's the fifth one. Men need to feel supported and not criticized. Appreciate the feedback. The challenge that most couples face is that they haven't been trained to have a healthy relationship. They haven't been trained to be married. That's why people should go through premarital counseling. But truth be told, it starts before there. A lot of Eastern cultures, they start training their daughters to be wives at a very young age. The men... Are, are, are trained to be fathers and overseers at a very young age. Are you following what I'm saying? And, and there's still some, you know, twisted things in certain cultures. 
But the point is, is that they're, they're, they're trained for marriage at an early age. Most of us have not been trained for marriage. We, we have not uh, witnessed a good marriage within our homes, within our community construct. And so therefore, uh, we don't have it. We, we didn't get it. Are, are you following me? So it's hard to give what you don't have. Um, Titus 2, 4 and 5 says, And so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reveled. Powerful. So when that training is not there for a woman or for a man, then the family lacks those things that's needed in that household in order for it to flourish. Am I communicating? Is, is this okay? Is the flavor okay? Okay, all right. So the second thing that women need to understand about their man is their man needs respect. A man needs to be respected. Being respected for a man means that you have faith in what he's capable of doing. He may not be doing, but what he's capable of doing. Respect for a man is like giving love to a puppy. It's the best way I can put it. So, so how, how do you honor um, your, your husband's need for respect? Uh, some of it has to do with respecting his judgment, even if it's off, even if it's off. And truth be told, sisters, a lot of brothers' judgment is off. That's why we need you. <sighs> Amen. Amen. So, so what are you saying? Sometimes you have to treat him better than he deserves. Yeah. Treat him like the man you know he can be. And, and I know this can be hard. This can be a hard one. When you know your husband just doesn't deserve nothing. Come on. Come on. And some of us brothers don't deserve it. But I'm just giving you some principles that I believe can help you. But when you hear me say this, it, it really speaks volumes and will make him hear this. It will place a, 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 a demand, an unseen demand on him to step it up. Because he knows you treating him better than he deserves to be treated. I'm just saying. See, that's when you leave room for God to step in there, the Holy Ghost, to convict his heart. Come on. So, so you got to understand there's power in praying for your husband without hurting him. Because some of us, brothers, it's easy to hurt us. Our egos. Most men won't agree with that or admit to that but what am I saying you got to let God be God and so when it comes to making decisions and you feel like you have to speak your mind <laughs> speak it and then let it rest so it doesn't mean that you, you you can't say anything just speak it like I was saying a little bit earlier make sure season with salt I mean season with grace Yeah, you got that part down. Good. <laughs> I told Doug, I said, pray for me, man. I'm going out here. Does this make sense? What, what, am, what am I saying? No man wants to be overpowered by his woman. So you guys know I'm big on saying this. I ain't no punk. I got to learn not to say that. But it's a truth for me. 
And it's something that was actually birthed out of childhood trauma. When you've experienced bullying, when you've experienced uh, uh, some form of abuse, and then you, there's just one day you just go, it just ain't going down like that. Then ain't nobody, ain't nobody punking me, ain't nobody cussing me, ain't nobody getting ready to act like they, they getting ready to, you know. So that's wired. I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Right? Watch this. I'm saved, but my flesh ain't saved. So that's why I have to make sure that I, I walk in the Spirit. Uh, listen to me. I, I, I stay filled with the Word of God so that in those moments, hear me, brothers, the Spirit is stronger than the flesh. The Spirit is stronger than the ego. Are you following me? And, and so I, now I have not mastered this. I'm working on mastering this. I'm working on mastering this. So pray for me. No, not other men. Just pray for me. <laughs> so, you know, deliverance is a process. Some of us need to get delivered fast, though. <laughs> Amen. <sighs> Ladies, this is a big one. Are you getting anything out of this? Yeah. Men need to feel like a superhero. Oh, man, this is good stuff right here. See, men want to feel like you're Superman and not your Clark Kent. You, you got to make a man feel like he'll just step out in front of a bus for you. Dun, 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 dun. You understand what I'm saying? That's the power of a woman. Women, you have powers that we don't have. <clears throat> you have powers that if you use them correctly, you can have a brother doing whatever you want him to do. Don't tell the brothers I told you that. This is the truth. See, <laughs> brothers want to feel like you impress with the things they do. It's, it's like the little kid that wants your attention and wants your good, Johnny. That's, that's, you're just so spectacular. See, women do it for the kids all the time, and men stand on the uh, on the sideline going, "What about me? What about me? Aren't you impressed with my?" Aren't you impressed with the way I go out there and work? Show him that you value his opinions. I can't say it enough. And cherish his advice. Here's a big one. As much as possible, express how much you look up to his competency and never humiliate him when he doesn't live up to your expectations. Here's three wisdom nuggets for you. No man is a man. Here's the reality. No man is a man without a woman. And even if you don't have a wife... Watch this. You need a sister. You need an auntie. You need, come on, am I, am I, big mama, mama, you understand what I'm saying? Every man needs a woman in his life. Hear me. God has created you women to help us men be our best selves. And brothers, you have to know it's just in the nature of women. Women will test you. 
to see if you are who you say you are. And she has to know that she can trust you and count on you. It's a two-way street. You don't just get that by not putting nothing in. Hello. Hello. And then sometimes just tell a brother it's okay when he makes mistakes. Come on. See, the need is to feel, ultimately, here it is, the need is to feel accepted and supported at your lowest point. And so the way that you satisfy a man at his lowest point, hear me, is showing him unconditional love and understanding, even if you don't understand. Which oftentimes, truth be told, we don't understand each other. Men don't understand women, and women really don't understand men. And so that's why men are from Mars, and women are from Venus. You'll catch that later. Yeah. Here's number four. Is this okay? Am I out of time? Am I? Okay, it's on zero. I don't... Okay. Okay, just didn't set it. Okay, that's okay. I'll go another hour. Um, men need praise and approval and, and you say well why do men need praise and approval because oftentimes they didn't get it from someone that they needed in their formative years so I realized I was having this conversation with my wife and my daughter I got praise and approval from my mother oh man but I didn't get any praise or approval from my father. So although mama was being mama and daddy, all the single ladies, single mamas, there was still something she couldn't give me that I needed to get from that man. I, I, just like for a little girl, mama can be there but there's still something she needs from her daddy called validation and praise and you my princess. Are you follow what I'm saying? See, although many men betray the epitome of strength, they are often secretly worried they're, they aren't cutting it in all aspects of life. It's something that a man deals with, most men, not all men, you know, um, that we can have these moments where we feel like we're not cutting it. It just ain't enough. Do I have two brothers that can relate to what I'm saying? Okay. So, you know, affirmation and, and specific praise from that special woman in your life it gives guys a sense of security and confidence in, in their relationship as well as that they're able to go out there and face the world. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we get so caught up in what each other doesn't do that we don't appreciate what they do. See, Again, I, I, I just want, want the women to understand something. Real men, all the brothers say real men, real. feel the burden of being a provider Amen. for their family. Amen. Trust me, most men want to provide for their families like Rockefeller. <laughs> and it's frustrating when we can't make that bread. When we can't secure the bag the way that we want to. Or we're having an unproductive month or season. Come on. So that becomes a weight within itself. So most men, real men, want to provide. Now there's some lazy jokers out there. You just need to get rid of them jokers. Because you're going to be taking care of them the rest of your life. But thank God for a brother who does want to provide. Although he may not... Be the breadwinner. He's doing his best. Amen. 
See, here, here's a, another wisdom nugget, and I'm going to give you a, a revelation, ladies. Women can relieve discouragement by a healthy dose of appreciation, encouragement, and support of their man. Tell him you appreciate what he does. He might not be producing much of nothing. But just appreciating him for the effort. Be like, I see you, little Johnny. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> I, I want you to get the revelation here. Your, what am I saying? Your husband needs your approval. Men won't tell you they need your approval. But we need your approval. Come on. Any man that tells you that he don't need your approval for nothing, he's, a, he's lying. That's a result of childhood trauma. Come on, because he didn't get it from his mama or his daddy. And so he, he just, he's hardened himself and said, I don't need it from nobody. I'll give it to myself. And that's how brothers get selfish and inconsiderate and self-driven and not factoring in the family. Does this make sense? See, he needs to know that you approve of him as a man, as the head of your family, to lead even when things get tough. See, when your husband has your approval, he feels like he can scale Mount Everest. Man, come on, I'm, I'm giving, I'm dropping gems to sisters out there. Make that brother want to go out there and ski on slopes he's never skied on before. <laughs> and most brothers don't ski. But make him feel like he can go out there and just ski. Yeah. Praise God. Here's the fifth one. Men need love and honor. And again, all of this, it goes both ways. But brothers need it too. Romans 12.10 says, be devoted to one another. In brotherly love, honor one another above yourselves. This can be tough when your man ain't what he needs to be. It can be tough when your woman isn't what she needs to be. This is a mutual principle. This is a, this is a, a biblical truth that requires a seed. It, it, it's the seed of honor. You can never harvest what you don't give. And oftentimes, the, 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 the clashing and the bumping of heads just make you not want to bestow honor on the other person. Because why? We don't feel like, each, you know, they deserve it. But what about if, 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 if every couple, if every family unit, watch this, if every, every family, church family, if everybody said, guess what? Our, uh, we're going in the month of July for one month we're going to see who can out honor who we're going to see who can sow the most seeds of honor I wonder what would happen so like for me now this is personal for me so like I've had to make this adjustment almost in every aspect of my life because most people don't do good with you consistently fault finding, nitpicking, pointing out where they're missing it at, pointing out what's not right. Because nobody likes for you to point out where they're missing it at. Nobody wants, you know, somebody else uh, pointing out their shortcomings. And what's not good enough. And that's and that and that and yeah, yeah. So how do we how do we show this brotherly love that Romans talks about where we honor each other above ourselves? The catch there is, and I have failed at this at times, is becoming selfless is when you learn to wake up and die every morning. Die to self. 
my flesh is screaming right now and I want to go off. But I'm going to die because dead men don't scream. Dead men aren't emotional. And I have been emotional at times. Remember last week I talked about the little boy Anthony? And then the little boy, you know, I, the big Anthony say to the little Anthony, didn't we say that we was over that and we healed? And, and, and little Anthony go, yeah. And then big Anthony say to little Anthony, did you hear what they just said? Did you, see, did you hear how they just treat? Did, did you see what they did? And little Anthony goes, yeah, I saw it. And then if, if Big Anthony doesn't allow the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, to navigate him in that, mo in that moment, in his response, he'll react because of the childhood trauma that he experienced that is taking him all the way back and resonating this thing, reactivating it. And now, slowly I turn. Just like a woman, a man's most important, maybe even more. And I think everybody agrees on this. A man's most important need is for honor and respect. Probably above love. You might not show me a lot of love. Okay, not me. You may not show, you know, your man a lot of love, but your man needs to feel like he respected put some respect on this thing got to be honored if I don't get that if a brother don't get that it's hard it's hard for a brother watch this to be selfless so that's how a lot of brothers malfunction you be like, he's supposed to be saved? Yeah. <laughs> but he got issues. Brings me to number six. I'm going to go fast. Are you guys getting anything out of this? And again, all these principles work across the board, JB. Speak affirmations. Speak affirmations. Speak affirmations. Don't, don't, don't. Ladies, don't act like your, your man is prophetic and he knows how you feel. <laughs> Speak affirmations. Watch this. And it needs to be genuine. Are you following what I'm saying? So I'm not saying just make up some stuff. <laughs> but it's important, hear me, that a man hears you say some good stuff to him. Amen. 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 Now, women need it too. Amen. But we're talking about what? Amen. Okay. And so Gary Chapman, in the five love languages, he talks about this, how affirmation is very similar to validation. But I think it applies to a lot more everyday stuff, really, throughout life. And so compliment how he looks. Compliment when he smells good. Compliment his sense of humor. Compliment. Tell him that he's doing a good job. Might not be doing a good job, but you just want to exhort him. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Y'all be good. Y'all be good. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Ladies, how about this one? <laughs> she said, what about if he ain't funny? <laughs> then give, give him a pass. Give him a pass. Give him a pass. Be like, ah! stop. No. Uh, <laughs> Remind him why you love him and why you think even the kids love him. Or other people love him. And he might not be loved by his kids. But watch this. You tell him why you love him. Amen. Amen. And watch the effect that it has on him. 
Just watch the effect that it has on you. you you'll see the power of your womanhood. Man, you'd be like, man, is that all I had to say to get him to do that? <laughs> be like, yeah. I'm telling you, a wise woman gets masterful with her words because she can get a brother to jump off a building. Hey, come on. Come on, I'm just saying. I'm telling you, compliments are powerful. Amen. Here's the last one. Here's the last one. And uh, brothers, you can write me letters if I'm lying. And that is, men want peace. Men want peace. Now, now this can be difficult. <clears throat> On two sides of the coin, when you have small kids, you know, uh, there's a lot of variables here. Are you following what I'm saying? But, but, but men want, you know, like some quiet refuge. Amen. A place where they can relax and, and prepare for the world the next day. Now tell all the brothers, brothers, don't come in expecting for it to be such peace and you have this tranquility that you don't have to talk and interact. When you walk in, spend the first few minutes talking to her because she has a lot more words that she needs to get out and express about her day and what's transpired than we do. We probably prefer not to, not unless it was a big victory, say anything about how our day went. But, you know, if we won the trophy, we could, we'll tell you that when we walked in. It's not going to be a dissertation about winning the trophy. You missed that. It's okay. And so when a man, listen to me, is with his woman, he does not want her, he does not want to feel like his, his wife is his mother. Who I'm dropping gems. Remember this, nagging never accomplishes what the wife hopes it will. It may get done what you want done. You might get done what you want done, but not with the heart and the attitude uh, you hoped um, the actions would display. What am I saying? We got to take a step back and purpose to try to understand each other. And at every turn, hit the reset button. Okay, we had a bad week last week. Let's hit the reset button. And let's figure out how to love each other the way that God intended for us to love each other. And that starts by understand, trying to understand each other. And, and maybe we will never accomplish really understanding each other. But it should be a priority to try to understand. Amen. 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 And then let love undergird that and be the foundation for how we approach and how we entreat each other. And it's okay to say, you know what? I apologize. I've, I've been missing it. I've been missing, I've been missing you and what you need. So help me help you love me the way that I need to be loved. And that's kind of the approach that we all have to have. And that takes a, a level of humility for two people to say, let's help each other figure out how to give each other what we both need. And I don't know if you're honest enough to, to, to agree with a point that I made last week, and I said it earlier, that both of us, nine times out of ten, we know that there's only perfect people here at the lift, both of us didn't get what we needed in our homes. Come on. So, so we're already at a deficit coming into this thing. Because we didn't see a good example. We didn't have a great family experience. Am I communicating? So if we're going to do this, let us figure out how to do it God's way, the right way, so that we're a benefit, a blessing to each other, and not a curse to each other. I had someone tell me that, hey, if, if an individual continues to... to uh, communicate with their spouse and handle their spouse like this, everything that they do will be cursed. 
What's the point? When we mishandle each other, we bring about a curse. In other words, it, it creates an unnecessary stronghold which prevents us from producing what we need to produce as a couple, as a family unit, come on, so that it's for our good and God's glory. I'm done. I'm out of time. I thank you for yours. Hallelujah. Amen. Love. I mean, men desire to be loved and appreciated. Men desire to be respected, to have peace in the home. One of the things I want to talk to you about is peace in your soul. Knowing that you have a need that God comes to meet. A lot of times we try to find peace in different ways. Try to find it through love, that's difficult. Try to find it through doing this, doing that, trying to earn money, trying to do that. I still don't have the peace, the real peace that you desire. Well, that peace, that shalom peace, only comes through knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. To know that you know that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If something were to happen to you right now, do you know for sure that you would spend eternity in heaven? That your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life? If you're not sure, I would like everyone to bow their head right now, but if you're not sure, I want you to lift your hand up and say, Paul, I need that help. I need to know that I know that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And maybe you've accepted Jesus Christ in the past and you've backslid, you've, you've taken, went down some wrong paths like a lot of us do and, and get straight away from going to church, go straight away from the things of God, and you said, you know what? I've got to come back because I know that the only way for eternal life is with the Father. And I want to come back, and I want to make amends with God. And so you want to renew your life back to Christ. If that's you, lift your hand. then maybe some of you have said, you know what, I've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I know that, I'm, that heaven is my home, but I feel powerless. You know, I like the Holy Ghost to be really filled. I need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The Word of God does say over in Acts 1.8, He says that you should not leave here until you are endowed with power. That's the deutimus power. That's dynamite power. That's power to be effective witnesses here on this earth. If that's you that need to be filled to know that you have the Holy Ghost inside filling you, then you raise your hand. And then some of you have come around and said, you know what, I like this church over at Abundant Harvest Lift. I visited here a few times, and I want to make this my church home. He said, you know what? I like the pastor. I like what he says. And I can, I can see myself growing here spiritually. If that's you, raise your hand. You want to make Abundant Harvest Lift your church home. Amen. Okay, it looks like we are all family here together today. So you can rejoice and thank God that we're all here together. And I want to invite my brother up. Bless you, Elder Paul. Wow, what an awesome word. The Word of God says, 
in John, 3 John 3. Beloved, above all things, I wish that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Pastor just gave a word. When, you, when he talks about prospering in every area of our lives, that means even your relationship with your spouse. He wants you to prosper, not to be mean, not walk after this flesh, but walk after the spirit. Because relationships, pastor is just saying seven things a, a man needs. And saints, you know, as pastor was teaching, I took copious notes because that's the way that I grow. So, and I'm not here to, to uh, prod anybody or to try to preach a sermon, but I, I want to admonish. He was said just saying how he would be foolish to get up here and bash women when, they, when they're the tithers, <laughs> right? Well, guess what? I want to admonish us brothers you know we we do i i personally i want to know that i'm the provider for my house my house my wife is my helpmate she helps me in the area where i'm torn down the areas where i'm not doing so good and, and she does give me those words of affirmation and she does give me that honor and she does i, I believe the word of the lord says the the, the woman is to turn the heart of the child towards the father. So with that being said, I want to talk to you about tithing, brothers and sisters. This is a command. The, the word of God in, in Malachi 3 says, Will a man rob God? Wherein have we robbed thee, you, you may ask? He says, in tithes and offering. This is not, this is not a suggestion. This is a command from our God to pay, give your tithes and offering. He wants you to recognize. He wants to see if you recognize where your source is, that he's your source. He wants, to, he wants you to, to, to see, he wants to test you to see if you know. My, my, my source is not my, my job. It's not the money that I have in the bank. Because we all, believe it or not, some of y'all might be a little bit more wealthier, but we all one paycheck away from, from being homeless, if the truth be, truth be told. And then uh, the word of the Lord came to me in Luke chapter 6, verses 38. It says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men run, shall men give unto your bosom. This is the law of reciprocity. Pastor was just talking about the principles of good relationships. But let's talk about the law of reciprocity. If you give to your spouse what she needs, in return, she'll give more to you. Well, guess what? I was just blessed this morning, a brother, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not bragging or boasting. I'm a tithe of saints. And a brother blessed me this, this morning real good. Out of, out of the blue, he just, the Lord said, give and it should be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men. So whatever I give, he is giving me above and beyond what I give and then some. I'm, I'm telling you, those of you who are streaming live, it works if you work the word. If you believe and have faith, just believe and have a little faith. God is not slack concerning his promises. Whatsoever man sow, I promise you, he says, that shall he also reap. If you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. So I think I left my offering back. Sister Lillian could receive my offering back. It's in my Bible right there. I'm sorry. If you would hold up your seeds. Yes, ma'am, that's it right there. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for this time of giving, Father God. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you with our seed. We, we declare, God, that we will not be slack concerning our tithes and our offering. 
Father God, we will give what you tell us to give. We will sow what you tell us to sow. We will sow when you tell us to sow and who you tell us to sow into, Father God. We honor you with our seed, God. This is seed time and harvest. And Father God, we thank you that our seed is going into the ground, good ground. And it shall produce that which you have called it to produce. Men shall give into our bosom. Men shall give abundantly and above all that we could ask or think, God. According to your word, God, you said you, you would give, God, abundantly, exceedingly above all we could ask or think. And we thank you for that, God. And we praise you and we give you honor. We give you glory. We bow humbly before thee. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, as they receive the offering, praise God. Um, as you can see, we have a few key individuals like Dr. Michelin is not here. She needs to get some rest. Minister Denise had a minor surgery, so pray for her total healing and recovery. And um, some others had to work, and so interesting uh, day to day, but our team has done a great job. Praise the Lord. So I'm here to share briefly a few announcements. Uh, Jaylen, if you can put that first one up for me. Um, ladies, the DDD retreat in La Quinta, California. Amen. It's going down. Registrations are coming in. Uh, you can find a discount code on the website. I mean, you can I mean, you can get a suite for share a suite with a sister, two or three sisters. And and uh, I mean, it's extremely affordable. The registration is only seventy five dollars. Uh, contact your girlfriends and sisters and and let them know about this summer trip. Amen. At the end of July, uh, we need those of you who registered, who signed up to please, please, please. You know how hotel reservations work. They don't charge you once you book it. They charge you on the day that you get there. But we need you to secure your rooms this week, this week. There's some contractual obligations. And so, of course, it's on the daughtersofdivinedestiny.org website um, uh, that, you know, kind of is instructed uh, ladies to make sure that they uh, book their hotels before a certain date and there are a lot more women who have signed up that need to book your hotels okay so do that within the next if you can 24 48 hours uh, we have a uh, special show me the next slide what we have next yeah 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 so we have a special couples event that uh, we schedule for July 1st 7 p.m. here in the city of Pasadena. RSV is, uh, RSVP is required, so you can go to the, uh, you can sign up after service, or you can go to the church uh, website, lift411.org, go to the events page. You'll see that image right there on there. Click on it and say, yes, uh, this is an RSVP for, um, you know, put your name in and your number or whatever and then we'll give you confirmation of the location it's a private location uh, then we also want to encourage you not to forget about TNT Tuesday night gathering praise God at 7 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook and then last but not least somebody say your money matters yeah so um, you know if you would like a complimentary session on uh, recession proofing your finances a little financial literacy session uh, you can uh, contact me I'll be more than happy to uh, spend some time with you assessing where you're at and and uh, what you need to do to get your finances in order as well as planning your future retirement and family legacy praise God um, I just recently uh, got my state license, so I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Part of a big financial literacy campaign uh, that uh, is, is just 
doing extremely well. So I want to make sure that I'm able to bring that to this church as well, our church family. All right, stand to your feet. Amen. Thank you for joining us today on behalf of Dr. Micheline. Amen. Who is not here. It's always a blessing to be with you. Amen. And to fellowship and uh, have some worship in the word. Praise the Lord. Did you all receive this word today? It's all right. Okay. Praise the Lord. Did I regain some brownie points today? No. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you and praise you for this is a day that you've made. We thank you, Lord, for this gathering. Amen. For giving us an opportunity to come to the well and drink from your word. Praise God. Sup from your table. I thank you, Lord, that everyone here under the sound of my voice is walking away with something that will benefit them, benefit their, their relationships, their households. Father, I thank you and praise you that angels are now encamped around and about each and every one of us to protect us as we travel on the highways back to our respectful places until we see one another again. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Go in peace.